Hey, welcome to a funny thing called business. We are four business owners with over 30 years collective experience under our belt, sharing the capers and triumphs of running a small business and how we now avoid perilous customer chaos and pitfalls. I'm Claire Worley. We also have Kate Curry, Darren Langley, Pete Morgan. Beautiful. Today, guys, we are talking about keep it coming, recurring income, how to make it. This is the $64 million question for any business owners, isn't it? So so for for our lovely listeners, we've got the answers. This is it. This is it. Hold on to your hats. So um, let's talk about our experiences in relation to recurring income. Who's going to kick us off? So back in the day when I started out, (laughs) just cast your minds back, uh, 16, 17 years (laughs) As a new web design business, I was like, how can I get, you know, more money out, not more money out of clients, but how can I get regular income? Because everything's project to project with websites, or it was back then, certainly. You build a website, you put it live, you take the money, and then you say cheerio and hopefully keep in touch and do some updates, things. But how to build in, like, that kind of recurring, retained income was a bit of a challenge back then. But I think now things have changed and people see that, there's a, a, ve- a value and a benefit in having your web designer available on a more regular basis, keep, kept on a kind of retainer um, so that you can do little updates or react to things. And that's something that we launched a good, I don't know, eight years ago, or more than that probably, was our first sort of aftercare packages, monthly aftercare packages. And it just cuts out the back and forth. The, the client's got to change. They want to make, they're gonna, they know they're going to have to pay for it. They're, it's always going to be awkward and it's like have a conversation about how much is that going to cost yeah. and back and forth, back and forth, then invoicing and it's actually only a 10 minute change anyway and it's just, you, all the faff- faffing about takes longer than the, the work to do. Yeah. So having that knowledge that the client can just drop you a line, have a, it's been organised, um, put in their request, the web designer makes a, a change, everyone's happy and you just you know move on to the next thing sort of thing so it's really smooth the process it's allowed for clients to be able to make more changes to their websites and keep it updated and for us of course the benefit is we've got an income we can count on yeah that's coming in every month and you can resource your business better can't exactly you? And we can more set, set time aside so it is it's been a something of a godsend really so out of interest presumably your ideal client profile is a little bit different for those who want that kind of package as opposed to that i just want a website i don't want to see you again for another yeah. five years absolutely <laughs> i mean I, blunt. I couldn't, I don't want to I see couldn't you blame again. them but you know um <laughs> yeah no i mean we for me now it's about having that relationship that ongoing relationship because there's things we can suggest and come up with and go back to the client about and you know and an input into their website as well um so it is all about the the benefits of having that ongoing relationship and having been there on hand when when needed sometimes Mm -hmm. things go wrong that is nobody's fault stuff changes the internet's a fickle beast something breaks or is different to how it was before you're there just to fix it for them on hand there's no yeah messing about so yeah people i think who just kind of think oh i'll just get it get a website and then that's done they might just be thinking about a website as a box ticking exercise. Mm-hmm. Oh, I've got a business, I need a website, tick a box. Well, they definitely are thinking benefits. of it as a box yeah, yeah. ticking exercise, aren't they? Because, you know, I see businesses all the time who just think, oh, I've got a website, but it doesn't work. Uh, it doesn't get any inquiries. And I'm like, well, how yes. often do you update it? Yeah. Oh, we don't mm. update it. Well, that's why you're not getting <laughs> yeah, any inquiries exactly. then. It's all right. They'll find it. There's only a couple of billion <laughs> websites out there. I'm sure. Exactly. You know. Um, I'll get around to it eventually. <laughs> I think I may have shared this story again, but I mean, I have to reshare it because I was such a numbskull. <laughs> um, in an attempt to kind of regulate my income right at the beginning of my business, you know, I put together um, a package of three sessions, and I think it was like 60 quid a session or like 150 quid for three. I was was giving my services away. I might as well have just been like, it's free, fine, come in. Um, And the person asked me if they could have the three sessions at the cheaper price, but pay individually. 
Do you get it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Guess what I said? You said yes. Didn't you? I said oh. yes. Of course you of course can. Of course you did. And guess what happened? They, they stiffed one. you. <laughs> I think she had two <laughs> sessions and then that was it. Oh, That's a bit so... like a buy one, get one free or buy two, get one free. And you say, well, I'll have the three, but I give you back two and I'll just keep the free one. Yes, totally yeah. that. Brilliant. That's Good exactly what I did. What an idiot. But I think these are the silly things you do in business, don't you? At the start, you're just trying to be so accommodating. You've got to go through yeah. that though, I think, to... Do we really know? understand what is the no, right you just thing have to, to listen do. to this yeah, podcast. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> well, ex- yeah. That's why we drop all the clangers. Yeah, so uh, you don't have to absolutely. share with other people. So you guys don't need to drop these clangers. <laughs> these yeah. are the ones to Yeah, avoid. please don't drop clangers yeah. like that. I was stupid. We've made all the mistakes for you. <laughs> Kate, what experiences have you got with recurring? Um, yeah, I've always found it a little bit more tricky to, to um, find a solution to this because. Um, I mean, before, uh, and I think I sort of have now. Um, but before, oh, not sort of, you have. Well, no, I have. Okay, yes, I have. Um, but um, beforehand, it felt, I mean, well, how do I, um, what do I do every month? And uh, and I was looking at the way I was working. It's like, well, everything was a project and it involved like, oh, how much is it going to be? And you have to do a proposal and send it over and then they have to think about it and then agree it and then come back. I was like, God, this is painful. And... Uh, and really, at the end of the day, it's like if we could cut out all of that admin and just have um, just a creative resource on tap, because that's the product we sell, then uh, wouldn't that be lovely? So that's what I developed in the end. And it's literally uh, studio time, studio expertise every month for a certain amount of money. Uh, that comes in every month. And uh, and it's just a wonderful way of working. There's none of that. There's none of that like to and fro and paperwork and like, oh, how much for this? How much for that? Um, and it cuts out time on both sides, so we're all winners. And uh, it just means as well, when you're working long term with somebody, you build those relationships better, you get to understand them and their business better, you can advise them better. Mm-hmm. Um, but then of course, like it's the recurring income as well, it means you can cash flow forecast, yeah. you can see what's coming in. You know you can pay your bills in you two know, months' time. You can pay time. your bills, you can know like, oh, well, in, in a few months' time, you know, maybe I can afford to bring in somebody else. So. It's um it's actually been a huge key part of my own business growth in in developing that as a as a solution, and it's been amazing. And I, I'm like just just a note to put out there. I wish everybody could work in that in that way with me. Really, that would yeah. be fantastic because it it saves so much bother, doesn't think, it? Yeah, I think it. The other bit is with the the bit about not having to cost stuff from the client's point of view. It means they. I think it's a barrier if you think, oh, right, I'm gonna, I really need this doing, but it's going to cost me money, I'll leave it. With this sort of approach, they, they, they can get it done, can't they? They're already paying for it, they've budgeted it in, uh, yeah, and they just get keep, the change done the that they really need. Yeah, yeah. It? it keeps the momentum going it because it's like, done. well, this is a resource, I need to be using it every month, and that's yeah. when you're also going to get the rewards. Yeah, they're going to get the well, most benefit and results from it. That's mm. it. We're plugging our services. <laughs> well, I, 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 I Just it. visit www.kudos.co.uk. <laughs> uh, I see it now with working with businesses who, you know, I want to work with, but they're just offering me one-off stuff. And I'm like, oh, for me, I, I don't want one-off stuff because... Well, my, you know, I'm in it for the long haul with my business. And, you know, I want long-term results. So, you know, I see those mistakes happening. Mm-hmm. Pete? Uh, yeah, I mean, again, in the early days, I was just like, right, you want to make a podcast? Great, okay. There was never a discussion about how long you're going to do it. I would, And I would literally, the business would live kind of week to week because that's when they wanted to to publish so I had no idea if they were going to do a new episode that next week and over time that's just developed now so all of my clients we have at least a six month um, agreement that they're going to produce content for for six months so I have an I you know I've got an idea about right this is going to be the income that's going to be recurring and for the majority of my clients it turns into years yeah you know i think uh january 2024 is one of 
my oldest client will have been doing a weekly podcast with me for five years. It's so um, good. Which, you know, and it's good to, to know that. For me, the next step is to kind of renew that six month every time. Um, Because I think I was doing it from a point of, right, okay, by the time we're getting towards that six month, there'll be a new client coming in and they'll have a six month. And so at least I know I've got this money coming in, whereas I need to do it right across the board of, right, we're committing to another six months. Yeah, month five, you need to talk about that. Yeah, probably. <laughs> am, I allowed, am I allowed to coach while we're on the call? Uh, uh, yeah, you're on, the podcast. <laughs> on the call. Hello. <laughs> you're on mute. You're on mute. You, I can't see your screen. I don't know what you're sharing. <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, Pete. What would your Pete now have said to your Pete back in oh. the the beginning? If I, if you know, would have said. You know you've got clients who are just constantly renewing with you and you've got that recurring income coming through. What, what would that pay have said in I the I think it would have been to have more confidence with new people yeah. coming through the door, of learn from learn from every client and have more confidence in, in what you do so that when a customer comes through the door, you're not kind of resetting every time of, okay, yeah, no, well, you just start and then you decide when you finish. Oh, no. To kind of go, no. Right. Okay, we're going to do this, and this is how long we're going to we're going to do it for, you know. But at the same time, I'm always aware of the fact that at the end of the day, it's a business podcast. It's not. We're not saving lives. It's not hearts and kidneys. No, so, but none of us are saving lives, are we? No, but I think what some of us are doing is a bigger part of running a business, whereas what I'm doing is quite a small part of being a business owner. You know, because in the majority of cases we produce business podcasts so no no i'm part of a marketing plan so you know i'm very aware and that's why what we don't do we don't kind of have the uh kind of the big contracts and the the, you know the signings and all that it's done very much on a uh, an agreement that we have um between us because i'd have a real hard time kind of enforcing that because other things we all know that stuff comes up mm. you know i uh, see i think the lack of packages and recurring income therefore recurring income is one of the main reasons why most businesses fail yeah because they get to that first year and business owners have scraped through every month not knowing where their where their mortgage money is coming from, how they're going to pay all their business bills, and it becomes too too much, too stressful, that they step away from it. And the answer is all in the packages, isn't it? Mm. Yeah. So, Kate, what would you have done differently? Um, had you have known, well, had you have known that your partner packages were going to do so well, and. <laughs> I, 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 would you have stopped fighting me for so long <laughs> <laughs> yeah i wasn't I, I remember when we were talking about this right at the very beginning and i remember thinking god these will never take off <laughs> but um like me I, we, like me we google and the internet yeah. it'll, ne- it'll never work yeah. <laughs> it's a fad it's a fad <laughs> yeah um and i don't know why um i felt like that um but there was something in the back of my head going like, I think you should give it a go uh, because <laughs> it made a lot of sense. But I was like, I just don't know if clients are going to want to work with me that way. Is, uh, and what I do is so intangible sometimes. Yeah. Um, I mean, we've got our branding packages, which are, which are lovely and they're quite you know easy to put together and, and quite nice to explain what they are and price up and everything. But then all the other stuff is just sort of like the creative ideas and, and, and what we want to do monthly to help our clients grow. And that's so difficult yeah. to nail and put into. And I didn't want to be too rigid with it. I like the idea. I, I yeah. don't think that's good for creativity. If you just go, that will give you like four social media posts per month and things like that. And that yeah. my, my brain doesn't work that way. I like to be more like, let's really think outside the box about how we can be <clears throat> bespoke with your business. Um, and so I found a way now um, where it is strategic and 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 rigid in some ways in the way we deliver it every month yeah but what we actually deliver is quite fluid and i think that's what really um was the light bulb moment i think when i realized that i can still have a package but still work the way i want to in a way that's going to generate this recurring income and once i'd got that off the ground um 
and I've got you know several clients working with me in this way now and it's really enabled me to grow and I'm like right we need to this is it yeah. this is the way forward and yeah. the feedback I get from clients as well is it's so nice because it feels like we're part of their team as well because we're there every single month without fail and um, you know speaking to them regularly and yeah it's, it's just a lovely part of, of their plans yeah so it was all about finding a different way to approach it with your kind of own creative so. stamp yeah. yeah I think that's exactly what it is um so yeah I, I I just think that um and now I get ratty when other people don't have packages <laughs> that's, what, yeah, okay. yeah. that's yeah, exactly yeah. what I was saying well, earlier. it really frustrates me I'm like I want to see a package yeah, yeah to be fair give me a choice yeah, absolutely yeah if and I it, if I'm not being offered a package I'm like what is this? Yeah, I find <laughs> I find it hard to work yeah. with people who don't work like me. Mm. Yeah. The packages are nice as well because it's like we know what you need. It's yes. it, it's yeah. much more confident way yeah. of, of putting forward your package rather than going like, oh, tell us what you want, we'll go and do a proposal. Yeah, you know, I love which it. Feels a bit more woolly. That's so true. Yeah. I love that. It's it's you as the business owner, the expert saying, yeah. we know what you need because we've seen your problem. However unique it might be to you, we have seen it and we know how to handle it. Mm -hmm. Darren. Yeah, no, I, I agree with all of that. that that's absolutely, I, I've had that where um, uh, clients want to lead the project because they think, you know, they've got to come up with all the answers. But so yes, absolutely turning the tables and proving your expertise. And I think, um there's probably a bit of that in terms of you know the the ongoing work that you do with clients because you're still offering your your knowledge in the future you know like ongoing and um meeting them regularly or talking mm -hmm. to them regularly and giving them ideas as well but what was the original question because well, was, was was <laughs> <laughs> what would you have done differently at the beginning oh, because yeah. you started by saying you know you've you did it for the last eight years and perhaps people weren't ready for it before yeah do you think now looking back they were ready it was just you weren't ready it well, well um no i think it was it was just not really a, a thing from from like probably more than eight years maybe 10 years ago um nobody would apart from hosting which is an ongoing cost um and, and those elements people weren't in the space of you build a website and then you need to maintain it. It yeah. was just a build a website and it's, it's done. Yeah. Well, I've got my website and it, I might look at that again in five years time. Um, and that was it, you know, apart from the annual hosting costs, which are, were minimal, are minimal really, but um, it just wasn't the done thing. I think looking back, I could have been innovative and, and tried it out, but I think it would have bucked the trend a bit too much perhaps back then. And now well, you could have been a disruptor. Could have been a disruptor, but they'd have all said like, <laughs> what, why would I want to? pay you monthly for what yeah you know i don't know so um i think uh perceptions have changed a little bit in terms of what people need mm, and, and all okay. those benefits we spoke about earlier are, you know are really able to be realized you know mm. so what have you learned about well let's say what have you learned about business through recurring income well the by and large the problem is me rather than the client <laughs> That it's my naivety as a business owner, my uh, newness as a business owner, which is the obstacle to creating recurring income rather than what the client wants to do or is willing to pay for. That's been the kind of big learning thing for, for mm -hmm. me. You know. For me, it's been, there's no such thing as easy money. Yeah. Um, I, I have a lot of people come to see me about, you know, creating recurring incomes, passive incomes, as if it's something that you can just go, I'll put this together and then everyone's buying it and I just don't really have to do a lot. It's just yeah. not true with recurring incomes. You know, I, I think I can speak for all of us when with our recurring packages, we are very integrous with what we put out there, how we deliver stuff and making sure that we're giving everybody value because... That's what you've got to do. Otherwise, they just go, oh, you know, this is rubbish. Uh, yep. I'm paying. I'm getting nothing. See you later. So. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally agree with that. I mean, I think the it, it's the balance between what people are paying and what benefit they're getting. And if you can't offer them that benefit, because I do think there is a bit of cynicism from a client perspective, and understandably so, that yeah. I'm paying you for what, like you just said, you know, it's like I'm paying you yeah. X amount per month, every month um and what do i get for that so 
um yeah for us it's hard work to keep up with all, all of the yeah the maintenance of contracts so there's a lot of work involved um and it adds up but you know as long as we're showing people value and benefit then we're there for them then i think that's the mm-hmm. uh that's the upside yeah so what about you kate what have you learned about business through your recurring income Oh, um, I think it's really what I've learned, I suppose I've learned about myself is it, it's given me so much more confidence to speak to people about what I do. Whereas before, I remember my very first network meeting that I went to and, you know, like, well, what do you do? And I was just like, um, and I just did a bullet point list of all the last few things that I've designed for people. Yeah. I'm just like, I, I think my strap line then was I'll do anything for anybody. And, uh, <laughs> I think I've seen that on a toilet wall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I think it's it's packaging my services has helped me like understand better what I do, what I should be doing, what yes. how I should be talking to clients, uh, how to recommend what they need more articulately. Um, and I just feel so much more confident now going to speak to people and go, well, you know, tell me what, what the problems are that you're facing. I love that because that's what it starts with, doesn't it? Yeah. Tell me what your problems are rather than this is what I offer yeah. any good to you. Exactly. And, and then it's just like, well, actually, I've got a really good solution for that. And then you can just sort of slide your packages out. And, and then it's quite an easy decision by the time you get to that point. So it just um, it just generally makes life an, an awful lot easier. Mm-hmm. And uh, like I say, it makes you so much more confident with how you speak about yourself and your and your services to people. Very true. Confidence and clarity, to me, are the two things in business that are completely priceless. Mm. This episode is brought to you by United Carpets Flooring and Bedding. A flooring store specialising in carpets, rugs, vinyl and wood flooring, plus beds and mattresses. Check out their stores in Birmingham and in Mere Green, Sutton Coalfield, as well as 68 other stores around England. Share this podcast on your socials and you'll be entered into a prize draw for a £50 discount at United Carpets. Plus, Naeem Arif will gift you his books on customer experience that share current best thinking from 20 plus international customer service professionals to achieve impact and visibility through world-class best practice customer service. Check out United Carpets Flooring and Bedding, unitedcarpetsandbeds.com. Okay, so let's talk about challenges. What are your biggest challenges now that you have when it comes to kind of the offering around, you know, recurring packages? My two would probably be around giving value. And I guess that's tied up with my coach talks a lot about personal responsibility. You know, it's your responsibility to be getting out what you want from working with somebody so it's very easy isn't it i suppose to have a coach and you know not booking for your sessions or not do the work but it's about personal responsibility isn't it you've invested you want to get out of it this so what you put in you get out um so that'd be my two biggest challenges mine is similar to that last one really because it is sometimes it's getting um clients to actually utilize yes the, the services they're paying for so you know we're really busy and we've got lots of clients but if some of them are really quiet for a, a long time um you know they're not getting the benefit and it's you know, we can make suggestions to them we, we send out you can lead a horse to water we, you can yeah we we communicate with everybody every month but like you say it's getting them to to actually things and it's difficult when business owners are busy you know absolutely but um yeah, I'm sure there's always something a business can put on their website on a monthly basis. That, uh, oh, definitely, and they should and, be, shouldn't yeah. they? Kay, any challenges? I suppose my challenge is try not to meddle with them all too much. And <laughs> once you've got them set up, like, because my brain always whizzes like a million yeah. miles an hour. I'm just like, ooh, I wonder what happened if I did yeah. this, that or the other. And you've got at some point just go like, no, you got to stop meddling and, you know... Um, just just let them sit for a bit and you know test them and make sure that yeah. you know get feedback and that kind of thing but I, I find it hard not to meddle with them and go like oh i wonder if it would look like if i completely 
<laughs> completely changed the whole model. Um, whereas actually, I, I know I should have the confidence that what I've developed is 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 really strong. Uh, and do you just... mean start messing with like designs that you've done, kind of knowing when no, to look, step away? No, they're actual packages themselves. So like, just I, I do sort oh, of. Oh, okay. Yeah. I don't know. Do you? Do you meddle with yours? Um, <laughs> Are you a meddler? <laughs> I don't. You know what I mean. <laughs> what, what I do, and I, I would suggest that everybody should kind of relook at their packages every couple of years. Yeah. Because the market's changing so much. Your experience and expertise changes. And what you want from your business changes. So you yeah. could all, you should it's, it's knowing when to meddle and when to leave, yeah. isn't it? And, yeah. and I suppose yeah. that's the thing. when. Uh, I, I'm a meddler too. You're oh, a yeah. I'm always playing with it. <laughs> Hold on, that's another. a different podcast, uh, Darren. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I think if you've left it, if you, if they're working and you've got happy clients, mm. um, and you kind of have done them recently, like in the last six months, stop meddling. Yes. Let them settle. Uh, you'll soon know the signs when something needs changing. And it's very rare that it kind of all needs throwing out and starting again. It's little tweaks here, things that you want to add or change. Yeah, it's just fighting the urge to do, yeah. to do it sometimes. Oh, yeah, because we want to give loads of value. Because we have the power to. Yeah, yeah. we want to give, we wanna <laughs> yeah. give loads of value. When, yeah. You know, oh, let's offer this as yeah. well and just chill out. <laughs> You know, it's supposed to be work-life balance as well. Yeah, I suppose it's like sticking to them as well when people want to, other people want to meddle with them. Who wants to meddle? I don't know. Some people are like, oh, could we switch this out and do that? Oh, instead? yeah. And things no, like that. they're not the right clients. The clients no. who want to meddle with them are not the right clients. <laughs> That's them told. <laughs> Come on, they're meddling yeah. with my package. Yeah, I mean, mine is actually kind of the, the opposite of, of Kate's, as in I do meddle only because podcasting has changed so much in the past five years changed so much in the past three years changed so much in the past 12 months and with the advent of uh so many companies coming up offering a lot of the services that either clients were doing themselves so like compiling show notes creating yeah. marketing assets things like that um it's keeping abreast all of those and working out which ones if any to add into the the packages or do they go as like a um like an add-on like a bolt-on yeah so they can take whichever package they want but they can have this as an add-on as well um you know so it's working out that and just keeping uh, abreast it moves so i have so many newsletters every week of right you need to check out this and there's this uh, new service yeah. that's doing this and um you know i'm signed up to so many things <laughs> so it's that it's just making sure that like you said that the value is there for the for the the clients you've already got and any new clients that come on board because in my mind a new client comes on board they're knowing kind of what I know they know what's out there so they want someone that can do all of that or offer all of that or works with a web app that does it for them anyway so I think it's really rare, though, that the client does know that they haven't got the same level of expertise no, as you've got. No, but I, I find it benefits to to kind of believe that they okay. do. Yeah. So I'm, I've am i got to match what they're... Yeah. Not in that way of, it means I can talk to them, you know. You, you still have to not dumb things down, but you still have to watch you the way you're phrasing certain things when you're talking about things of a technical nature but you know with the, what is on offer out there it's uh, i have it that they know as much as i do so i've got to keep up with what there is yeah. out there yeah that makes sense you know. okay so uh let's talk about some silver linings what are the silver linings uh when it comes to recurring income putting your feet up there you go. That's the the money's coming in. It's fine. Thanks very much. Um, you know, I can relax, and I know that bill is going to be paid because I'm doing this work over the next. Six yeah, months. you can plan it all in. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Schedule, and you can relax knowing that all your bills are paid. Yep. Yeah, that is a very nice feeling as a business owner, isn't it? Yeah, it saves an awful lot of effort to like keep going out and finding new clients all yeah. the time. Um, and having the same conversations over yeah. and over. Yeah. Whereas it's really um, the, the benefits for me, like the, obviously the financial benefits are, are great, 
but for me it's all about building those long-term relationships as well um when someone's paying you to work on a long-term basis with them they're committed to working yeah. with you in in the right way you know and to achieve something big together and uh, and and that's the silver lining for me so that's almost above yeah. The, yeah. the financial benefits in a way it's uh, that's the that's the juicy bit that I, I love to do. I love that because that's like a client just saying, yeah, I am all in. Mm. I trust you implicitly with me and my business to get the results that I've come to you for. Mm. And I'm here for at least 12 months. It's a good feeling. Yeah. Uh, that doesn't sound very long when you put it like that. I know. <laughs> 365 days. Yeah. Do it like that. And then, then I'm off. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, then I will recur no more. Um, <laughs> for me, the silver lining is the is the um, all of the things that have been said, but was the little the little uh, invention, I suppose, of go cardless. Oh, <laughs> that's, yes. that's the thing that's enabled yes. me to be able to Good do point. this. I think really, when I think about it, um, being able to take direct debit payments via go cardless is, is a godsend. Um, and I just love to get those little emails that say, Go Cardless is sending you X amount of yes. money. It's like, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, it's <laughs> That's nice. Very kind. <laughs> very nice you. It's very nice. We're going to charge you this much. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the silver lining for me is that I, in the 17 years that I have been coaching businesses, I have never found a business where they can't kind of package up their services and get recurring income. No matter how they come to me and they go, oh, no, it's, no I can't yeah. do it for my business. I'm like, challenge accepted. Yeah. I like that. Yeah, that's it. Brilliant, guys. <laughs> <laughs> are, we got, are we going to recur next month? I, I felt like I needed, you know, when you need fireworks to go off when yeah. you say something really profound. <laughs> that's what I was waiting for then. <laughs> I was waiting for booms, fireworks. No. Were well, you waiting for applause, <laughs> weren't you? Sorry. Oh, well, That's I think, it, come yeah. on, give me an applause. Can we edit some in afterwards? <laughs> of course we can. We'll put in a load of applause. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> yeah. I have never found a business where they can't kind of package up their services and get recurring income. No matter how they come to me and they go, oh, no, it's, no I can't yeah. do it for my business. I'm like, challenge accepted. Yeah. <laughs> I like that, yeah. Well, thank you, guys. Good conversation, as always. And for the businesses that are listening, get your recurring income set up. It will, oh, it will give you that feeling. So please share, subscribe and review so our fellow business owners can enjoy, be inspired and always keep focused on the fun side of business too. This has been a Monkey Pants Productions podcast.